I'm Edie Lash, and I'm inside the Hub Culture Studio, Davos 2019. Really pleased that one of the co-chairs of the World Economic Forum's annual meeting has come by the studio to talk to us, Juliette Luscombe. In real life, she's the Director of Strategic Initiatives for Feeding America. Tell me, Julia, what's your main message, and what's the message that you take from being a shaper who's been asked to be a co-chair for the, for the annual conference this year? Right. So first of all, I think it's really exciting that the forum has decided to have Global Shapers in six of the seven co-chair roles. The Global Shapers community is an initiative of the World Economic Forum to empower young people under the age of 33 to have impact in their local communities. So we're a community of 7,000 people with um, over 160 hubs around the world working to drive impact in our local community and a great network of um, global leaders. Um, and so our main message really is that the last wave of globalization has left a lot of people behind. Mm. We're seeing inequality grow across the world. And we know that as um, the generation that will be kind of taking the reins in the future, a lot of the challenges we're facing today with inequity and climate change are things we'll have to grapple with in the future. So it's a big priority for us that Globalization 4.0, which is the topic of this year's meeting, um, lead to a more sustainable and equitable global architecture. So give me some of the specific proposals, specific things you want leaders to be taking away sure. from this week. Sure. So first of all, I think it's really important that countries be thinking about investing in local and regional economies. There's a lot of development in big cities today, but we need to think about building regions that are able to participate in the next phase of globalization. And that's going to take the right mix of infrastructure, education, job opportunities, investment. I think a lot of times in development, there's kind of over-indexing on one of those, mm -hmm. especially infrastructure. Um, so leaders really need to be thinking about getting that mix right. It's also important that we think about development strategies that um, not only benefit everyone, but are targeted at the needs of the most vulnerable uh, people and communities. Um, so really, for example, in the United States, in mm -hmm. my work at Feeding America, we know that hunger in rural communities mm -hmm. is particularly challenging. So we're really trying to develop solutions that will increase access for folks in rural communities and lift them up in particular. That's really how we're going to get at equity. Investing in human capital, if we're going to give it its sort of official title of jargon, um, right. means you get people to stop worrying about being hungry, about right. having a roof over their head. Education and health need to be something that is almost taken f uh, for granted. Right. Uh, and once you do that, people pull themselves up. Right. Give me a story about how you've seen that in your work. Yeah. So I think a challenge in the U.S., um, and many folks may not realize this, but there's 40 million people uh, facing hunger mm. um, in the United States. That's one in eight and one in six children. So I think it's a problem that really shows the inefficiencies and inequities mm. of this last phase of globalization. And also the fact that it's not just inequalities between the U.S. Uh, and somewhere in, in Africa. Exactly. It's inequalities within the most developed countries. Absolutely. Right. This uh, We need to make this a priority both across countries mm. and within countries of reducing inequality. But to your point, food security intersects with all these other issues, health, job creation, education. So if we can provide folks with the support they need, um, in terms of all those just baseline needs, mm. um, it makes it a lot easier for folks to be financially and food secure. Um, so something we do, for example, is partnerships with the health system, where if folks have chronic diseases like diabetes, a lot of times that reinforces food insecurity because um, in the U.S. they're having higher health care costs um, to get the kinds of food and treatment they need for diabetes. So we'll provide targeted meal boxes um, that meet a diabetic's meal requirements. So that kind of helps alleviate that food portion mm. um, of their expense so they don't need to make that trade-off. Oh, I want to talk to you all day, Julia, but I'm going to let you get on with your day. Thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Davos studio here in 2019, and I'm Edie Lush.